Hey, what's up guys, Dorian Cott here. Welcome to this video. This one's on Reason. Today we are going to talk about automating or modulating different parameters in Reason using a single macro control. And we are going to use that of the Combinator. So let's jump straight into Reason. Um, I sometimes like to use a macro control because it allows me to get one sweep of automation under the hood for several different parameters. So sometimes, let's say for a synth build up, you will have um, three or four different automations uh, that you can sort of combine into one single macro control using the combinator. So I'm going to show that to you now. I've got a little synth arpeggio running here. And instead of just automating the cutoff, I want this um, synth arpeggio to really open up, right? So we want the decay to open up and we want the envelope amount to go up as well, all in one motion. So the way we can do that is we don't have to combine multiple devices. Well, <laughs> in this case, it would be multiple devices with the Tsar reverb, but apart from that, we don't. We can just use a single combinator around any device. So what you do is you just select the device and hit uh, combine. And there you go. It's in a combinator. So it's routed its output to the combi output and then it goes into the reverb. And now what we can do is we can use these four rotary dials here to uh, map them to the combinator, right? Um, this is pretty common knowledge, but um, I would uh, like to encourage you, if you will, to use the combinator in your sound design sessions as well, because most people that I talk to that come from analog gear especially when it comes to mixing, um, they miss the ability to turn two dials with, with two hands at the same time. And the macro control can sort of help with that. So let's see whether we can use the macro to automate all these three dials, uh, the cutoff, the envelope amount and the decay, the filter envelope decay, all at the same time. All right, so we'll open up the programmer and select our device. In this case, there's only one device here, which is the antidote. And now, um, you know, the combinator is 10, 15 years old. We got to give it some slack. So you can't just click the different uh, buttons here and they will show up. You actually have to select them. So what we'll do is we go with rot rotary one. This is the mac macro that we want to use. And we'll send that to the filter. Um, where are we? The filter envelope. And we want to send that to the filter cutoff. And now this is the range. This is important, right? So we want the rotary to affect the dial in um, by 100%. So this is the range. It goes from 0 to 100. Now watch as I turn this rotary. Down here, the cutoff in the uh, antidote will rotate as well. So I can now change this dial. As I set up another, um, another modulation here, you can see that we've got rotary one and one target. So we're going to need rotary one another time. So I'll just click here, select a different source. So now we've got another instance of rotary one and we'll just send that to the, what did we say? We've already got the filter cut off. So we're going to send that to the filter envelope amount. Now, as you can see, as I move this dial, um, it will move both of them down here. Fantastic. But uh, of course, we don't want the movement to go from zero to 100% uh, for the filter envelope amount. Instead, we want it to settle somewhere in between. So let's say we want it to go from somewhere around the 10 o'clock position to the three o'clock position. So I would go the minimum and maximum and just decrease the range a little bit here. So set a minimum of 30% and a maximum of 80%. I've got 79 here. So 30% would place us around here and 80% would place us around there. And now as I've changed this modulation, as I rotate the dial, you can see, if you take a close look down here in this section, as I rotate the dial, you can see that the cutoff still gets affected strongly, but the envelope amount gets affected only a little. So this is what the scaling means. You can set up ranges, if you will. So let's do a third automation. Actually, let's um, turn this off for now. And just, I'll give you some audio examples before I keep rambling. So uh, let me just go here and we've got the loop running and let's turn up the filter. Thank you. 
so you can see the routing is working well. We'll now switch rotary one on and now it's also going to control the envelope amount. So now down low it's going to be, actually I'm going to adjust those here, make that a little bit less. So now let's slowly turn it up. So we've got a zero envelope or next to zero envelope. Actually, I'm, I'm going to turn that down even further. Let's just have it come up from, from the zero thing. So the clickiness will disappear towards the end, which is especially helpful if you have some resonance. And this is another useful application. So for example, say you have some resonance, you want to add some resonance, but you only want to add that to the lead part of your synth. I'll just use another rotary one and then um, put that to the filter resonance. Maybe don't pull up the range as high, but that will result in a filter where the resonance will only come in once you um, start turning it up. So now we are controlling three. And this is of course really nice to lower the resonance the lower your frequency gets because that way you don't get a lot of peaks in the low end. And uh, what I also wanted to do was use rotary one to say um, add some filter envelope decay. And I'll go from two, actually I'll um, add some more here. So we'll go from, let's say, 20 milliseconds, let's say 10, 4 milliseconds to a fully open, let's not make it fully open, but let's adjust the range a little bit. So now we should have the ability to um, write one single automation on this combinator. I might just as well put the notes here on the combinator lane. We don't need this lane anymore. Um, so I'll just minimize that. All right, and then I'll just draw in some automation for the rotary. Uh, of course, I've got the loop on. <laughs> right, and now it's just a, a matter of tweaking your parameters. So maybe let's not start the automation all the way down here. And then just for fun, I'll throw in another antidote, uh, so that would be down here. And let's just write a quick baseline. Get that down by uh, two octaves. So yeah, um, of course you can automate this up and down, but you can also, let's take a look at the back of the combinator. So we've got programmer CV in, so we can apply um, modulation to these dials. So let's just listen to this beautiful automation once again. That really wants me makes me want to throw some delay on there, actually. Nice. Quite a nice sound. <laughs> but um, we can do another thing. This is what I wanted to, um, to tell you. So we can use some uh, CV input to modulate these as well. Now we could use CV out from any device really, but just uh, to show off something cool here, I will use one of the Reason devices and I'm not sure, um, I think it's under Utilities and then I should find here the Pulsar Dual LFO, right? And there we have a beautiful LFO. And the thing I like about this is it's always really helpful for 
if I want to show some stuff because we've got this nice flashy light here that I can show stuff with. So this is our LFO output and we're going to take the CV output. Again, CV could come from anywhere in this particular case. Um, add that to the rotary one and then um, it should start adding some modulation. Oh, right, <laughs> it's programmer CV. So yeah, sorry for getting these two wrong. I mean, it was there all the time, but um, this is this is working now. <laughs> Apologies. So uh, rotary one, modulation input, you can modulate these dials. And um, now we've got an LFO rate uh, that we can use uh, to modulate the filter of this synth. The all, Not just the filter, but all three, or target all these three modulation parameters, which would not be possible if we were to use the synth's built-in LFO which only allows for one target. Oh, well, actually, they do have this modulation matrix here, but sometimes I just like using this method. Um, it gives you another access point of, you know, uh, being able to splice something into the modulation, like, for example, say, this LFO, because it allows for some pretty cool effects. Let's say um, we go... So yeah, that was the macro control in the combinator and how I like to use it for sound design purposes. Um, sometimes when you don't use the combinator because you're working on open devices in the rack, um, it's kind of, uh, you kind of miss that uh, there's this possibility to always automate multiple parameters and you can always go change the um, modulation amounts in the programmer. So um, yeah, many other programs do it as well nowadays, but always remember who did it first, the combinator, I think at least. And uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time. Doran Cut Out.